30 seconds. Karen never does that. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. Roll call. Nelson. Orison. Here. Larson. Here. Wunchell. Here. Hansen, Reet, here. Moriarty. Here. Thank you. Uh, quick housekeeping before we proceed to the consent agenda. We do have a public hearing tonight. I do anticipate there will be some public comment, and so we'll go over the format and the ground rules for the public hearing, how all that works just prior to going into the public hearing so everyone is clear. Does everyone have an agenda that wants an agenda? We're good? Okay. With that, we will roll into item three, the consent agenda, 3A, is a motion to approve the city council minutes of September 7th, 2021. B is a motion to approve class C liquor license renewal with Sunday sales for El Tapatio, subject to final approval by the Iowa Alcoholic Beverages Division. C is a resolution authorizing and directing the temporary closing of portions of city streets in the city of Spencer as requested by the Spencer High School for their homecoming parade on October 8th, <clears throat> excuse me, 2021, from 1.15 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. D is a resolution of support of financial commitment for the Main Street program in Spencer, Iowa. And that concludes the consent agenda. First by Bill. Second. Second by, I'll go with George. There'll be others, Lauren, or Tracy, sorry. So we have a first, we have a second. Is there any discussion or questions on the consent agenda items? The only question I have, Mayor, is the, um, the floodplain. Am I in the right one? I want to make sure. I'm, no, I'm kissing. I got yes. a question on the floodplain. Okay. I'm, sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. Excuse good. me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Right. No question. Nancy, how many Main Street communities in Iowa? 55. 55. We are one of 55. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Orison I, Larson I, Wunchell I, Reet I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item four, old business, 4A, is a ordinance amending Title IX, Chapter 16 of the Spencer City Code concerning floodplain management as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. This is the third and final filing. First by Bill. I'll second. Second by Donovan. Discussion on this. Bill, you had a question? My question is, all of this is just the management of the floodplain <laughs> concept, correct? Where's Alec? You want to touch on this again real quick? Of course. Good evening, everyone. So, yeah. For the city to um, amend the ordinance for uh, our floodplain management, it's strictly so that we continue doing the floodplain management and it doesn't revert back to the state. Okay. So any work in the floodplain, if we didn't manage it, the state, state would. would. Thank you. Alec, can you run through, to Bill's point, can you run through for the citizens an example of that? So if they had a floodplain question yes. and so, we did not have this on the books, what would be their experience? So if we did not have this on the books and say you wanted to do some work on your property, put up a shed, put up a fence, add an addition to your house, um, and you had what is known as the 100-year floodplain on your property or that's where you were going to do some work, you'd have to do a floodplain um, permit application to be able to do work in that area. Um, with us, you come to City Hall or you call up on or myself, we help you get the application, you take care of it here in-house. If we didn't have this on, on the books and we weren't, the City of Spencer wasn't doing that, you'd have to go through the state. It could potentially be a longer process, um, and that's, that's pretty much it there. 
Thank you, Alec. Yep. Any other questions or comments about this item? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Morrison I, Larson I, Wenchel I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 4B is an ordinance amending ordinance number 736, designating an area of Spencer, Iowa as the Spencer Urban Revitalization Area. This is the second filing of three. First by Tracy. Second. Second by Lauren. Any discussion or questions on this? I know Brian explained it at the last meeting. All right, hearing none, vote by machine, please. Morrison I, Larson I, Wenchel I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item five is a public hearing. Uh, just want to explain how this will uh, go down from a format perspective. Obviously, everyone has the ability to participate, and we welcome and encourage participation. Most of the times, we don't have a lot of people show up for public hearings, so it's good to see people participating in the local government. Uh, a lot of times after a public hearing uh, that deals with resolutions will move into a resolution the same night as the public hearing. In this case, we're not doing that. So tonight is just the public hearing and then we will move into uh, three readings after this. So what that means is the first meeting in October is when any type of uh, legislative action related to uh, abandoning uh, or vacating a street to the hospital would occur and so everyone's clear on that process so it takes three readings which means three council meetings uh, any type of modification can occur during that time any type of rescindment could occur or tabling could occur at that time for example with our mural ordinance a couple years ago um, it was on the agenda it went back off the agenda to committee it was discussed a little further and then came back and so I just want everyone to know that just because we're having a public hearing tonight does not mean that this is the beginning and the end of the process. This is the time for the official public record. If you have comments that you'd like to make, this is the time to make them. And so because this deals with physical property and street names and sometimes in Spencer that can get a little confusing, um, what we will do after the first and second on the motion when we move into discussion just ahead of the public participation, I'll have the CEO of the hospital come forward and we'll put the maps up of the streets that are in question on the vacating from the city to the hospital so everyone's physically clear about the area that we're talking about and then we'll move into on your uh, printed agendas it would be the second page the actual hearing so um, and if you have questions during the process or when you're up there just just let me know so with that we will move into item five public hearing 5A is a public hearing on proposed vacation of city streets East 11th Street from Grand Avenue to 2nd Avenue East and 1st Avenue East from East 10th Street to East 11th Street. I'll make that motion. First by Donovan. Second. Second by Lauren. Uh, before we move into general discussion, uh, Bill, if you would, please. And uh, for, for Bill and anyone coming to the podium, uh, so people at home can hear, there's a red circle on the mic. Uh, red is hot. Red means you're live. So before you begin to speak, make sure that it's lit red. Um, Brian can control it from up here. And then um, lean into the mic or move the mic closer to you so that it picks the feed up for SMU and Facebook Live as well as uh, YouTube. We archive all of our uh, council, council meetings on YouTube. And so with that, Bill, if you could show uh, the public the area that's in question tonight on the public hearing. Sure. Um, why don't we scan? Okay. One I think the next one might even keep going. Yes, I think this is probably the one that um, uh, most uh, that uh, best indicates the the street area that we are looking to um, have the the flow of traffic. It's not picking up. Is that better? Very good. And uh, I, I think as you see this, you get a sense of the, the hospital campus. And I, I think there's two elements to what we're uh, looking at here. One is the relocation of our emergency department to a more prominent location. 
so that public access is improved. Um, and also there's an element of as we look to the future, much like all of you do with, uh, with your city planning, uh, you're always looking five, 10 years ahead uh, to the future. In, in the lower quadrant of that um, uh, uh, particular map, um, the, the hospital owns about 85% of the properties there currently and see that um, as the hospital campus may need to expand in the future uh, as an area of potential growth going forward. And so the, those are the two uh, basic elements. Uh, the uh, moving and constructing, con constructing a new emergency department uh, is the, the uh, primary uh, priority at this point. That's correct. That's, south. That's correct. That's correct. That that's correct. That's correct. This is the current hospital campus. Yeah. So if we could go back yet, whoever's controlling. Uh, here we go, yeah. With this particular one, I think what I'd like to uh, point out is uh, with the red arrows, we show some of the main entrance points uh, for services uh, on the hospital campus. And if you go from the top, you have the Abbott Cancer Center, Immediately below that is what we kind of call our valet entrance. That's where people enter, not only for hospital services, but for some clinic services as well. Uh, then you get to our, uh, the main hospital entry. A lot of people coming to our surgical center, our birthing center, uh, and enter through there. Then if you go to the right, you can see where our current entrance to our emergency department is. And then at the very bottom, um, the entry into uh, Vera Medical Group, Spencer, and some other uh, service operations that are also located in that building. And I, I think what becomes prominent with this is the access uh, to the emergency department uh, takes a little knowledge about where that's at. It's not easy for uh, public access uh, currently. If we could advance that then. Uh, another one. Uh, and what this depicts uh, on this particular slide is a placement of a new emergency department uh, and ambulance garage, uh, and that does uh, place that uh, on a, a portion of East 11th Street. It also shows a link uh, into the medical office building as well. Uh, during the course of the day, uh, there is uh, considerable traffic uh, from the clinic to the hospital. Uh, not only uh, doctors going over to the hospital or staff, but also patients who are needing higher levels of care or a uh, particular type of diagnostic testing and, and those sort of things. Uh, you can see then with this depiction, we would have a circle drive and you can then see how entry points uh, to the hospital uh, primary services uh, align uh, significantly better. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, and what the, uh, this depicts, you can see up near the top where actually there's a architect's rendering of, a, of what the front of a new hospital uh, emergency department and the structure behind that would be and it kind of gives you the sense of that, that overall flow going forward. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, and then this shows you actually the front facing uh, aspect of uh, that design uh, from an architectural standpoint. It uh, really matches some of the design features that we have in other areas of the hospital. I think most people will improve. This would be a vast improvement over uh, the current uh, entry uh, to our emergency department. Of course, uh, through new construction, we're going to have uh, somewhat larger, uh, we'll be able to improve uh, patient privacy 
uh, and the flow of services uh, that we uh, provide through uh, our, our emergency department. Next slide, please. And this gives you kind of the, the view from Grand Avenue. Uh, so as people are needing uh, emergency services, especially for folks that might not be as familiar um, with locations, uh, as you can see, that would be uh, very, very prominent. And I think a, 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 one last point I'd like to make um, is also just the importance for hospitals to always uh, maintain their modern infrastructure and technology. Obviously, that's important to provide quality care uh, to our community and region. It's also very significant in our ability to recruit and retain physicians, um, which is a very challenging um, uh, situation for all uh, rural communities. And we're very fortunate uh, in Spencer uh, over uh, actually probably the last 30 years uh, is the growth and development of our medical staff to have surgical specialists and other physicians uh, that care for us every day. And in order to ensure that we, we just need to have a modern facility and access to the technology they need uh, to, to do their best work. Uh, this is all involved in this process. And also as we look to the potential for future expansion, uh, if I think you go to most medical communities today, even at rural communities, um, you, you see those campuses expanding uh, as technology changes, as equipment gets bigger, um, as you expand services. And we're real fortunate here in Spencer. Uh, we serve more patients today than we did 10 years ago and far more than we did 10 years before that. And how we manage our campus and improve our facilities is just so important that overall process. That's what I have for you, Mayor. Thank you, Bill. You bet. <clears throat> we will now move into the public hearing. So I declare the public hearing open. Have we received any written comments against? I can read them here. We have one from CenturyLink. Um, now I will preface this by uh, there's there's not three boxes for the public hearing, so there's not you know four against and then uh, hey I just need more information. <laughs> if there was, that's probably where this one would fit into. So uh, we are in current communication uh, with uh, CenturyLink, and uh, they do have a desire, I believe, to move forward with more information, but. As part of the public hearing, I will read, you know, what we have received from them. So this is from Sean Hostetter, who is a network implementation engineer. So it says, uh, Alec, who is our planning director, we are not comfortable vacating the easements since we have facilities within that area. And then uh, there's been some clarification, I believe, and communication and, and, you know, part of the process moving forward is dealing with all of the easements and utilities in that area. And so as of tonight, this is where it falls. But I believe they do have a desire uh, to have further continued discussions. And we were looking for an updated official statement from them. We have an email, but I'm not comfortable reading that as an official statement. So that is, that is where that one sits. Do you have any other written comments against Teresa? No, that's all, Mayor. All right. I have received some general comments uh, questioning the uh, timing of the expansion and is the hospital interested in a sale have they are they staging this to sell the hospital um, just general questions about that I reached out to Bill today we had a, a nice conversation and uh, while I don't want to put words in Bill's mouth I'll, I'll uh, certainly read you uh, the statement that he sent to me and he can obviously have the microphone if he wants but the the current uh, position you know for the hospital is that it maintains service line businesses arrangements with Avera there have not been nor are there currently any discussions about the hospital being sold to Avera or any other health system so um, it's a question that was asked we always try to operate under as much transparency as we can in government the people need a voice and those that was a concern so we reached out to the CEO and that is the response for the official record tonight any of the, you said no other written comments against? No others. All right. For oral comments against, uh, we'll have you come up one at a time if there is any. And for the record, uh, what we need to put in the notes is your name and your address. And then we like to have somewhere two to four minutes, five minutes. Um, if you need more, we can 
certainly entertain that, but um, that's what we like to do. So at this time, the, the intent of the public hearing isn't a debate back and forth, like between people. If you have questions, we'll try to get them answered, but this is your opportunity to participate in expressing your concerns either for or against the project. So with that, I would open the floor up to any oral comments against. Would anyone like to speak? Dan, go ahead. Uh, my name is Dan Reese. I live at 1507 17th Avenue West and um, also the interim CEO of Season Center for Behavioral Health uh, and that's at 201 East 11th Street. Um, really the, the concern for, for me as uh, the leader of Season Center is what this will do to our business. For those that know that we are uh, located directly east of the hospital on 11th Street. Um, so closing this road would take away direct access that our employees and our patients have to Grand Avenue um, and basically puts us kind of in a corner. And Brian, I don't know if you, if we can, if we can back up on the one slide. Keep, yeah, if you can keep going back kind of the, to the map. Like that one's fine. So looking at this map, 2nd Avenue East that runs um, south and north on the east side of the hospital, that goes between Season Center and the hospital. Um, and what a lot of people don't know is that's not a through street. There's a barricade up that doesn't let people drive through that. And with this project, that may change. I don't know those details. But if it doesn't, um, Season Center, which is on the corner of 11th and 2nd Avenue there, is basically in a corner where people can only access us from coming east on 11th or coming from the south on 2nd Avenue. And so it makes it very difficult for our patients to, to come to our office. Um, we, on any given day, have 100 to 150 patients coming and going from our office. Uh, we have approximately 50 employees assigned to that office, that that's their home base. And about half of those are coming and going throughout the day to go see patients. So there's a lot of traffic leaving our office um, that really limits how we can come and go from there. Um, and so that's a big concern for, for our business to be able to have one patients find us easily, um, but also to make it um, easier for our employees to be able to uh, get out of the business to get access to um, Highway 71, which is a main, you know, artery for for the city so um, you know we support the hospital and we're a partner with the hospital we work together well um, but just want to voice our concerns that um, doing this would have a dramatic impact on our business and having patients and and our staff be able to easily access our, our business so that's all I got thank you thanks Dan anyone else uh, oral comments against Brandon Uh, Brandon Edmonds, 609 West 10th. Uh, the number one issue I have is that there's only three main arteries on the west side of, uh, on the north side of town that run east to west. You got 18th, you got 11th, and you got 4th. So we're going to close one of those. I know you did a, a new traffic study, I believe, and I don't know what the data is on that. We're in the process of it. We don't. Do we have that data done yet, Mark? Or Jim? Close. Okay. Um, I, I know that. I personally use the road a lot. I'm assuming that means other people do. Uh, driving to the middle school, uh, the Lutheran school is out there, uh, the baseball fields, the soccer complex, easy to get to 10th to go to the high school. Uh, that would be my number one concern if we do something with 4th sometime, like a resurfacing or construction, then 11th is your through street. If you do something with 18th, it's the same way. So you're shutting down one of the main options. Uh, two, I was curious as to what sparked this plan when the hospital had made plans to remodel the old ER with the wing behind it, the old surgical ICU wing, and I didn't know why the sudden switch, because there was employees that knew about that upgrade. So I was curious what spurred the closure of that street compared to the sure. current I can, situation. I can, I can touch on that a little bit, and then you know afterwards, certainly if the hospital has more or whatever, but the, the simple version is that the um, original plan in the footprint without changing street flow. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure that's under the uh, alleyway there that would have to be dealt with and the cost to complete that project is significantly higher 
than if it's swung around to where its proposed location would be. So cost was a factor, and then I, I believe the uh, flow of space within the facility as well. If, the, if it was moved over, um, alleviates some space available where the uh, old ER is as well. Um, okay. This this information was discussed at our committee of the whole meeting. And the, yeah. So I, I just want people to know that that's not like a private conversation or anything like that. It was publicly discussed and all that. But that's that's what I recall anyway. Is there? Okay. Um, I guess if there's anything further, we can talk about it later in the public hearing. But that's to answer your question, Brandon. That's what I recall. Awesome. I, I didn't get to. I, I wasn't at that one. Uh, the the last thing I would I would like as a person in the community. Um, I know there was a discussion on somebody that's running for city council's page. There was very limited positive comments on that discussion. Um, the main point from that discussion that I had with a couple people was that we would like to see or know, will there be a better form of care than what's currently offered at the ER with a new ER? Are you gonna go and wait an hour still before you get seen if it's not busy? Or will this improve the actual flow of treatment as well? Because as a community member, that's more my concern, is the care of the employees, which are from the community, and the care of the people that are going in. And whether or not a fancy building doesn't mean a lot to me, I'm worried about what I'm getting from inside it. So, great, it looks nice, but will we get an actual benefit from it? Yep, that's a fair question, and we can probably take care of that tonight. I assume the hospital's in favor of <laughs> if they uh, uh, maybe during that time would answer that question, that might uh, speed the process on getting you an answer as to the type of care and does moving it improve the facility flow in the ER to have a better customer experience. Thanks, Brandon. Any other uh, oral comments against Lee? I could. You bet. My name is Lee Yude and I live at 1003 Grand Avenue. And I'm going to repeat part of what he had to say. Currently, there are only three east-west streets that run all the way through the city, 18th, 11th, and 4th. If you let the hospital close 11th Street, it'll cause more problems for 10th Street in the Grand Intersection, where we already have enough problems with vehicles trying to turn left from the southbound lane. At 10th Street, we have southbound people turning left that don't be or that don't seem to be able to get totally off highway 7118 aka grand avenue and there are countless times in the day that i watch vehicles southbound honk swear cuss because they cannot get over to the right lane and almost rear end turning vehicles the speed limit is 35 miles an hour and yet most of the hours throughout the day the traffic is going 45 to 50 miles an hour i talked with the chief of police at the fairgrounds and he didn't see any way of slowing that down. The hospital has already closed down 12th Street for their current Main Street entrance. How many more streets will be closed? How many more homes will be destroyed to expand the current hospital? Isn't it time for the hospital to build upward and not outward and uh, along with building parking ramps so we do not destroy any more low um, income housing for people that are just starting to buy homes. I believe that the hospital can still have a south side emergency entrance without closing 11th Street as 2nd Avenue East between 11th and 13th is no longer a through street. Why not just close the street and expand the emergency area to the east and south on 2nd Avenue? Yes, you said that there was a problem with cost. This new addition is gonna cost mega um, money, so why not put the money in removing the utilities or whatever is already under that non through street. Um, as for connecting the clinic to the hospital, why can't a bridge or a crosswalk be built over 11th Street without closing it to through traffic? In closing, I am asking the city council and the hospital administration to re consider closing 11th Street between Grand and 2nd Avenue and developing a plan to utilize the now non-through 2nd Avenue East to expand the ER. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Any other, oh, no, sorry. Any other oral comments against? Would anyone like the microphone? <coughs> All 
All right, seeing none, we will move forward. Have we received any written comments in favor of? We have none, Mayor. Are there any oral comments in favor of? Bill, do you want to touch on it all, the flow, or Joel, or anybody? Yeah, absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, part, part of the, the new emergency department will increase uh, the number of treatment rooms that we have available and, and include triage. Um, it will um, essentially uh, have a larger waiting room. Um, it's going to um, have a working core for staff. It's gonna allow more privacy for patients and their, and their family members when they're uh, receiving care. And so, you know, in, in healthcare, as things evolve, um, your your needs change over time. Uh, you continue to learn about uh, how you improve systems and, and processes um, going forward. Uh, for example, one of the challenges that we have today in healthcare is increased number of behavioral health patients that need services. Uh, it can be very challenging to uh, transition folks to higher levels of care um, just due to the lack of sufficient mental health services in our, uh, in our country and in our region. And so as a result of that, we want to have some special provisions for uh, when we have uh, patients stay for an extended period to keep them comfortable um, and be responsive to, uh, to the needs of families and, and those sort of things. So, uh, a lot of those things are involved uh, whenever you're assessing uh, a, a new uh, facility uh, to drive that. It's been many years since the hospital's updated uh, its, uh, its emergency uh, department. Um, there's lots of demands placed on hospitals as we're always looking to upgrade uh, various services. Uh, our behavioral health services, our cancer services, uh, our surgery services. Uh, investments in our diagnostic services as well. Um, and the time has come uh, for our, our emergency department. Um, and certainly do uh, understand, I, I would certainly uh, not uh, make light of any of the concerns here today. Um, with progress comes change. Um, and uh, we, we certainly understand that the hospital um, uh, uh, likes to be very uh, careful and, and to be cognizant of the impact of things that we do um, that impact our, our neighborhood. Um, we're, we're very fortunate to have a hospital that continues to grow uh, to not only meet the needs of the community but the region uh, generally and we're committed to do that um, going forward and we, we see a project of this nature important uh, to that overall mission so thank you. Thank you Bill. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, make, uh, I asked the, uh, our counsel if I could make a public comment from here or there. He said I can make it from here. All right. <clears throat> so state, I like to, State your name and address. Okay. My address, name is Bill Orison. I live at 917 Elmwood Drive here in Spencer, um, Ward 2, Representative. Um, unfortunately, our family has had to have been in that emergency room more than we wanted to <clears throat> in the last 48 months. And uh, to Bill's point, um, if you walk into the emerge into the waiting area, it is not welcoming at all. One, it's crowded. Um, there are days when people are in there having PET scans, and pre-COVID, sometimes it was completely filled. There were no chairs. If somebody else came in as an inpatient or as an emergency patient with a family member with them, it certainly is not inviting. Number two, once you're in the emergency room. Um, They've done an excellent job of making available as many spaces as they can for this, the patients that they have. Unfortunately, um, for those of you who haven't been there, there's just something uncomfortable having your spouse laying on a bed and the only thing keeping them private from the person in the next bed is a curtain. And that's what we have today. That's all we got. That's all we had to deal with. And so the whole concept of modernizing and improving the emergency services in what I think is probably one of the most progressive modern uh, health facilities in Northwest Iowa, we just need to continue on. So my main point was the emergency area. We need to do something with that. And I certainly concur with all of Bill's comments regarding the emergency room. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Are there any other oral comments in favor of? 
Mr. McAlpine. Bill McAlpine, 922 East 11th Street. Uh, working in the hospital for a while in the Avon Center, seeing the, uh, the emergency room and how it's functioning is probably one of the best in the country, but it's obviously they need more room. The only question I have is the heliport. Is that going to be moved or stay where it's at? Stay. 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 Yep. So for the folks at home, the, the question of the heliport, uh, am I saying that right? Okay. Helipad? Okay. Okay. Corrected by Joel Wassum, facilities <laughs> director. <laughs> The helipad uh, in the new plan stays where the current one is, and I remember at the committee meeting that we had, um, Joel went into great lengths talking about uh, the aviation rules and the, the flight path coming in and how that's regulated, and to move it uh, where it currently exists, there really isn't another option. Uh, a question was also thrown out. I don't want to speak for you, Joel, but hey, can't we just throw it on the roof of a building? And um, that has challenges as well, especially in our neck of the woods when it comes to snow and ice removal. And I believe it was in Grinnell, is that correct? Where uh, was it last winter or the winter before? Uh, they have a helip helipad, easy for me to say, on uh, top of a structure, and the snowplow truck actually went off the roof and unfortunately led to a, uh, a tragic accident. Uh, and so logistically, um, it, it makes sense to have it stay where it's at. So that, that's the answer to the question. Any other oral comments in favor of? Mr. Bolt. My name is Brian Balk. I live at 1124 St. Luke Drive. I think for me, as I've been looking at this issue and uh, I think about the hospital and its importance in our community, uh, the people it serves, and even reflecting on the mayor's comments at the last council meeting when he spoke about uh, the distance in which we find ourselves traveling for uh, different cares or different uh, opportunities or facilities. I believe you said something along the lines of it was 11 miles at one time and it's expanded out to 35. Uh, I had an opportunity to attend the long-term planning committee meeting uh, in which Bill spoke, and one of the things that struck me when I was looking at the renderings was the fact that the hospital already, the, if you, when you look at the campus and you look at its current layout, and if this were to proceed forward, what you create is an all-inclusive campus. And when I look at larger communities um, and even metro areas, what I often find and what I see, I think, I think of my wife and I going to Sioux Falls uh, here this Friday for some medical care. And when we go to that area, it's a campus. And I like the idea and I support this expansion because as I see it, if we can move ER to a new location, it's going to create an opportunity of expansion within the hospital in an existing space. And if I remember Bill's comments correctly, uh, the hospital seen an increased demand and desire from individuals, specialists, to be able to be on a hospital campus along with other medical providers who maybe have a surgical wing available to them. And so I look at an opportunity like that and I certainly don't discount the comments that were made earlier. Um, that through street is used, I use it. I, I'm sure many of us do and, and many of us will miss it. I do remember uh, this council, and not this body, but this council at one time having to talk about uh, First Avenue West when High V wanted to move. And that created quite the stir and controversy, if you can remember, and that was just First Avenue shutting down. I believe that when you look at the long-term benefits the potential for growth, the potential for added jobs, and not just any job, medical jobs. And you know, we all have a desire and a hunger to see an increase in our population, to see an increase in our economic development, to see better health care for all of our citizens, and I believe that this creates that opportunity. The one thing I do ask, and I'm sure this board will do, is to weigh 
the totality of these circumstances and ask what's best for the community. And uh, I guess if it was strictly up to me, I would uh, probably voting in the affirmative and, and move this project forward. And uh, I ask as a citizen that you do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Any other oral comments in favor of? I'd like to say Donovan. Uh, Donovan Winchell, <clears throat> 1304 15th Avenue West. My wife needs to drive from Deerfield to, Shine, to Shines. And she used to take 11th Street all the way through, but she went to lunch at noon, crossing Grand, is very hard to go straight across Grand. So she quit about six months ago and she turns from 11th Street into traffic on Grand because it's safer and then takes 10th Street. And if you drive down 10th Street and then you drive down 11th Street, I don't, you have to have a pretty smooth car on 11th Street. 11th Street needs some work, I could tell you that. It's pretty rough. Um, one of the things I'd like to see though on 10th Street is some additional signs as there's very few yield signs. If we're going to use that as a drive-through street, we need, with the street department, look at some additional signs. Probably a four-way stop on 4th and 10th, but that's a different topic. The other topic is, is <clears throat> a new person coming to, in to Spencer or a person out of town, and if you're going to the ER, you're in a hurry. You don't have a lot of time to put it into GPS. And if you try and find our ER now and you don't know where it's at, you can't find it. You think it's a, that's the employee entrance. I mean, you gotta go in the back and there's, where do you park? And you don't know what you're doing. This clarifies it, cause it's right on Grand. Everybody that drives through Spencer, whether you need the ER or not, gonna know where the ER is too. So um, I guess that's what I have for comments on that. Thank you, Donovan. Any other oral comments in favor of? I'd like to have two. George. George Moriarty, 500 West 3rd Street. I want to speak in favor of this for the Spencer Hospital. We happen to do all of our medical uh, needs in Spencer that we possibly can, and, and we've been fortunate so far that that's the only thing we've had to use and have had outstanding. And I felt for a long time we needed an emergency care uh, facility that uh, was accessible and usable. And I'm sure with signs uh, uh, di directing people to um, the Seasons uh, facility, uh, having them turn on 10th and go over to the 11th, uh, or going around just till they get up on 11th, it shouldn't be a problem at all. And I'm sure the city's probably already done some prior planning on that, I would think. So I think it's nothing but a win-win for the city and for the hospital. and. Um, the hospital is one of our largest employers in the city too, which does already lend to its economic development here in the city. And also brings a lot of people from outside of Spencer as employees, part of the 4,000 that come in here every day to work from outside. And it just adds to it. So that's my comments. Thank you, George. Are there any other oral comments in favor of? What's that? Yeah, I read those. Okay. Anyone? All right. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. So now for a little uh, clarification on what I said before. So a lot of times after a public hearing, we'll move into the motions that include moving towards a resolution. Uh, because of the scope of this project and the uh, nature of the number of testimonies that were given today and concerns, uh, we do want to take the time to deliberate on those and get back and answer questions that people have and address the concerns um, that they have. It's an important process. And so with that, what item 5A1 is, is it's a motion to uh, have the council, if they so desire, move forward with further action at the upcoming meeting, which would be the first reading. And um, the direction on that can include any type of direction towards staff or clarification on things. And like I said, during the whole process, um, things can be clarified, things can be amended, you know, it can change. But uh, we didn't want to take a fast track approach to this project, it's a major project. Um, as Mr. Bulk alluded to, the last time was several, several years ago. 
when we vacated a street and so we want to give it the due process that it deserves and, and the citizens uh, desire. So with that, item 5A1 is a motion for further action on closing and vacating of city streets East 11th Street from Grand Avenue to 2nd Avenue East and 1st Avenue East to East 10th Street to East 11th Street, from East 10th Street to East 11th Street. First by Bill, second. second by Lauren. Discussion or questions or anything specific? Donovan had brought up um, some clarification from Public Works on some street signage and maybe public safety as well. Are there any other concerns that you would like to see staff address on the project? All right. Any other? I would like Go to ahead, Donovan. see the final um, <coughs> street counter numbers that they were working on too. Jim, you said that. So for clarification, what Donovan's talking about is there was an initial study that was done. Was it last year, Mark? Or was it earlier this summer, Mark White? The, the July? Yeah. And the council had requested at the committee meeting another uh, study to be done because school is now in session. So we wanted to see the differentiation between summer traffic and fall traffic. And uh, that you said, Jim, that's about done. One more cycle and one more location. OK. So before we jump into the readings and resolutions, we'll, we will have that data. So just as, as you guys want to be uh, cautious as a community, as your elected officials, we also you know are requesting more information and clarification too. So, Mr. Mayor, is that yep, Bill? Um, the other point is is that because I'm liaison with the utilities, mm -hmm. I think it's important that this entire council hear their challenges that the utilities is going to have. I don't I don't want an engineering <laughs> study right. to go on, but some sort of affirmation that. Yep. Here's where we are, and this is the thing. These are the things we need to change. I think everybody on this side of the yep. of the desk needs to know that. So affirmation from uh, the staff that all utility easements in the affected area by service provider are okay, and yeah. you know can move forward right. with the project. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions or clarifications? Discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion carries. We will move forward uh, to the next council agenda item uh, with this project. Item six, new business, 6A, is a motion to approve performance bond and payment bond with Great Plains structures for resealing and scheduled maintenance on the biosolid storage tank at the wastewater treatment plant. The quote was awarded on 9-7 of 21. I move to approve the performance bond. First by George. Second. Second by Donovan. Any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. I thought maybe we'd have a volunteer to apply the biosolids, but <laughs> nobody, nobody's, nobody's stepping nobody's forward? Nobody. Okay. Looking for another job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Item uh, 6B is a motion to approve quote from EcoTurf Surfacing. For $10,952 for the rocket slide poured in place rubber safety surfacing with spring 2022 installation. This action was tabled at the last meeting on the 7th of September. First by Lauren. No, second. second by Tracy. Uh, Jared, do you want to grab the mic and just update everyone again quick on what it is and what changed from the recommendation to table last meeting? Yeah, so this is, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, so this is the, the safety surfacing that's underneath, that would go underneath the rocket slide. So with the safety uh, protocols in the state, we're required to have some sort of safety surfacing, whether it be wood mulch, uh, rubber mulch, or this poured in place rubber surfacing. Uh, we tabled it um, last meeting uh, because we just couldn't get the, the site prep um, done uh, when we wanted to for the cost. Um, and so, uh, we went back, talked to EcoTurf and um, Sterling West, who provided the two quotes, to see if they would hold their price for spring installation, and EcoTurf Surfacing would uh, hold that price once we have a signed quote uh, with them for spring 2022 installation. So. Thank you, Jared. Any questions? Discussion? Thank you. I got one, Jared. Yep. That's the same quote they gave us for yep the, okay yep okay thank you 
George, you want to put your, there you go. It, it's on. Oh, <laughs> Brian, Brian, <laughs> it was off. Brian just snuck oh, it in thank there. thank you, Brian. <laughs> He's, he has quick hands. He's always watching. I, I think he played third base. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that that was the whole thing was that if they would do it next spring, that we would go ahead and, and delay it. Yeah, if we were unsure if they key. would uh, be willing to hold that price next year for material costs and things like that, but they are willing to do that. So. Thank you, George. Any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 6C is a review of the bids received on September 16th, 2021 for the 2021 West 4th Street and 32nd Avenue West Storm Sewer Project with the project engineer being Cruz, Kate, and Nelson. Let's see, Jim, you want to talk about this? Good evening. Uh, do you all have a copy of the bid tabulation? There should be a three-page bid yep. tabulation in your packets. Thursday, we took bids uh, for this project. And so what the project is, it's a, uh, a storm sewer trunk outlet. It starts um, um, just, just a little bit west and south of the uh, 4th Street Bridge. And it extends from there, from the river bottom there. Um, it'll actually go in the cornfield that the, on the city property up to the corner of 32nd and, and 4th Street, and then it turns and goes south, um, basically to the uh, uh, just to the south side of the detention basin at West uh, Westfield Development. That's the uh, the hole you see out there holding water. There is no outlet to that right now, and that's what this provides. It crosses over 30, uh, 32nd Avenue, uh, just south of that detention basin and that it ends there. Uh, we also took an alternate bid to extend it west to the end of the current Westfield project or the line between Westfield and uh, Freeburg Edition. Um, that's alternate one. And we took a second alternate to do some water main work to provide a water main across uh, 32nd Avenue. Um, in some early discussions with SMU, they'd indicated that that might be de desirable. Um, I don't believe at this time they're going to want to pursue that, uh, but we left it in there to get some pricing. And so we got bids from five contractors, uh, so I'll just read them in order from low to high. The low bid was BD Construction of Spencer. Uh, second was H&W out of Sioux Falls. Third was Holstein Excavating from Edgerton, Minnesota. Fourth was Vanderpool and Excavating from Orange City. And fifth was King Construction from Wall Lake. Um, so on our base bid, on the second page, uh, BD Construction was low. We had an estimate of 650000 for the base bid items. And BD Construction came in at 636465 uh, which we were pleased to see. And then the next four were considerably higher. Um, in that $860,000 range. Um, in talking with contractors and looking at the project, uh, almost all that excess dollar amount or the difference in bids is in the big pipe items, uh, which I believe is an indication of their, their dewatering cost. Um, I know Northern had a big dewatering cost out there. Um, I think that's probably guys built in maybe, maybe more dewatering cost in than, than the losses have in theirs. Um, so it, it makes sense um, to me anyway. So the uh, low bid was 97.92% of the estimate. The average bid was 128% of the estimate, and the high bid was 139% of the estimate. Um, on the alternate, uh, we had estimated 116,210. BD Construction's bid was $117,060. And, and again, most of the other bids were in that $120,000 to $160,000 range. So we had a good number on the alternate. Um, at this time, though, we're going to recommend that we not build alternate one and we stick with the base bid. And part of the reason for that is uh, we don't know uh, what's going to happen in the next phase of Westfield. And this storm sewer alignment cuts through the very north edge of the second edition. Um, so we're somewhat concerned that we're 
going to get it in the wrong place. Um, although I believe we're pretty cut and dried on where the right of way will be. But probably the bigger thing is the connections for the for laterals to that. There'll be some laterals and some intakes to develop that property to the south. And those locations haven't been identified at this time. Um, and I guess the third thing is and when we originally budgeted the project, it was it was set up to go uh, just to that detention basin and provide an outlet for that. Um, so we don't see any real good, strong reasons in favor of, of moving forward with the alternate, and we do see some downside potential. Uh, so at this time, we would recommend award of the contract to BD Construction Services in the base bid amount of $636,465. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Thank you. So item 6C, 1 or 2, I would entertain a motion to either take action on the award or table it. Um, if we do award the contract as recommended, it would be to BD Construction in the amount of $636,465. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make that motion to move that forward and make the award. First by Lauren. Second, yeah. Second by Tracy. Any discussion or questions on awarding of the contract? George, look like you got one. Yeah. I, well, I was of the understanding that we had adequate uh, sewage for the facility for the new facility out there. We added that new um, partial from the lift station back to where the Eatons came down and hooked into it, and I thought. Well, this would so this one's just storm sewer. So this is the storm sewer running from um, IGL Westfield over up to I don't want to speak for you, Jim, up to Fourth and then east to the river. The storm was, storm the sewer only. Sewer. Pardon? The other was sanitary sewer. Yep. Oh, yep. oh, this one so is just we're okay storm. On the sanitary. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I yeah, got mixed ties. up for the sanitary sewer. Yep. yep this is All just right. storm sewer. Just storm sewer. Any other questions or comments? Just one other comment. Yep, there. Lauren. Uh, it's nice to see we got five people to pick from, or you had people to work with here. And it sounds like they're all people you've worked with in the past, Jim, the people that bid it. So that's even better that we had competent people you're familiar with. So appreciate all your help on that. Thank you, Lauren. <coughs> Any other comments or discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, vote by machine, please. Morrison I, Larson I, Wenchel I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 6D is a motion to acknowledge receipt of compensation advisory board recommendation of September 9th, 2021. Uh, just a little background before we take the motion. So we have an ordinance in Spencer. Don thinks we might be the only city in the state of Iowa. Yes. <laughs> that has a compensation advisory board. So uh, most every other town, the elected officials actually set their own wage. Um, it, it would be the same in this case if there was a wage change. It's via resolution, so we would have to vote on it. But we've added a layer in this community with a compensation advisory board, which is composed uh, of community members. And every two years is when they meet. They make a recommendation up to the council if there should be any wage adjustments to the uh, council's salary and then the mayor's salary. And they have made a recommendation um, to move wages up. So the... Uh, discussionary aspect of this the motion today is just to acknowledge receipt of their recommendation so they've made the recommendation we're going to acknowledge that we've received it and then we'll take action on it at a later date but uh, Iowa does have a law Brian is it November December there can be no modification to elected officials wages is that right correct um, we do have that the council would hold the first reading tonight tonight Okay. Uh, is item one and then as recommended is that later in the agenda you'll see us asking for a committee of the whole for you guys to discuss what you want to do with their right. recommendation if you want to lower it or not and then you will have the final two readings in the two meetings in October because the way it works is the current council cannot set its own salary and so it 
the, any changes that take effect now take effect after the next municipal election, which is in six weeks, and then would take effect at the effective date. And so, and they also can't vote on a salary increase or whatever in the months of November and December. So we have three meetings, this being one of them, to make any changes that the council wishes. And then, um, so that's why we'd have um, the first reading tonight, then Later, you'll see us asking to schedule a committee of the whole to decide, and because you, you're just seeing the recommendation for the first time to see if you want to fully accept the recommendation or the other choices you have to low, you can lower it, you can't raise it um, from the advisory committee, and then finish it out in the next two meetings in October. Yep. Thanks for the clarification, Brian. So we are on item six D one. Um, the acknowledgement and receipt of the compensation uh, advisory board. Actually, we'll do that first. We'll do 6D. A motion to acknowledge receipt of the compensation advisory board recommendation from September 9th, 2021. I move we acknowledge receipt. First by George. Second. Second by Donovan. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Now 6D1 is a... Uh, Ordinance amending Title I, Chapter 7, concerning the compensation of the mayor and council members. This is the first filing. As a reminder, they can change during the second and third. First by Bill. Second. Second by Donovan. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Morrison I, Larson I, Wunchell I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 6E is a resolution de-obligating, don't see that many times on the council <laughs> agenda, de-obligating funds for property number 10 as part of the Spencer Substandard <laughs> Housing Rehabilitation Program. Uh, the project will be rebid at a later date. My understanding is this is a, an award we had previously given. They'd like to uh, suspend the project of, until the future. Therefore, we have to have this item to uh, move forward, accepting the fact that they do not want the funds. First by Tracy. Second by Donovan. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, vote by machine, please. Mm. Morrison I, Larson I, Wunchell I, Reed I, Moriarty I. Thank you. Item 7, department head reports. Normally it's the first part of the month, but uh, it was a little long, that meeting. So we will move into that tonight. Planning department, Alec. <laughs> Way to go, Alec. Clear the room out. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, good evening again, everyone. Uh, so, planning department, uh, as you guys did tonight, the flood map uh, final reading there, um, we've been doing some work trying to make sure that we're up to date on the things that not only the city is putting into the ordinances, um, but also how best to help our new citizens that are going to be kind of newly affected by some of this floodplain changes. Um, there are certain ways that people can prove that their property is out of the floodplain due to elevation and other certain things that you you, you need an engineer to do. <laughs> um, but there's also ways such as uh, out as shown, um, if we can uh, help citizens through that. We've been in conversation with the DNR um, and FEMA on, on ways that our department can help folks uh, show that the, their properties are, are not in the floodplain or certain parts of their building are or aren't. Um, but by all means, please, if, you, if you're out there and have questions about it, reach out to us. We're, we're always willing to help with those types of things. Um, on other notes, uh, we have gotten through all of the uh, trees on the west side uh, of Spencer. 
Uh, we started out with 348 trees that were a little bit long and in going into the streets and the sidewalks. Um, over the past uh, month and a half here, we've gotten that down to 34 that we have noted, and we'll be getting out to get those trimmed up. So I thank everyone very much for, for doing that. That was a lot of work over the past month and a half that uh, our citizens have, have taken on. Um, and then going from there, uh, our planning and zoning um, board has started to have some uh, good conversation on ways that we can help um, existing uh, buildings, businesses, structures uh, be able to um, adapt through, through new zoning ordinances. Um, as well as new uses for those uh, zones. Um, we're working on those conversations uh, through, through the board, uh, and uh, it's really uh, a good benefit to keep moving forward with uh, updates there. Um, I believe that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. I'll keep it brief. Not so fast, Al. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm running away. It's on. Okay. Um, on the tree situation, I had a complaint about the North School, uh, that square block in there now where North School used to be. It's a park now. Okay. And over on the First Avenue uh, West, up by the, along there, that the city has trees that are t too low along there and haven't been trimmed. By the city parks and such? It's on the park side. <laughs> Turn that over to Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a move to the park department. Alex moved awful fast. Yes, we're currently working on okay. trimming most of our trees. We do have some dead, dying trees in, in our, our parks as well, and we're working on maintaining those just like everybody else. Okay, super. Yep. Got good news for them then. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alec, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Library, Mandy. Um, currently, the library is closed um, through this week, through Saturday, uh, because we are having the ducts cleaned um, for probably the first time in 50 years. Um, so uh, we're clearing out 20 years of dewy fur and dust bunnies from 1971. Um, so uh, it is closed because we don't want our patrons to be inhaling all of that. Um, and we also have to run a bunch of hoses through all over through the library and it's extremely loud. <laughs> so um, we are closed while that's going on um, and it'll also improve the airflow and efficiency of our air conditioning that was part of our CIP project. So um, we're getting that done and we should be complete with all of the things that need to be done by October 2nd. So we appreciate our patrons' patience while we do this. Um, and uh, we do have our online um, books and eBooks and audiobooks and some streaming video available 24-7, 365 days a year through Overdrive or Libby. Um, so uh, you can still get material to read. I know that it's not everyone's favorite method, but it'll do in a pinch. Um, so I apologize for our suspension of services during that. Uh, the other things that are going on is the 28th. Um, we are starting our plant exchange. So if you have plants that are either proliferate, like spider plants, and you have too many babies, or aloe uh, that you have to split up, or you have a Christmas cactus that's been languishing in the corner, or somebody give you an orchid and you have no idea how to take care of it, you can bring it into the library on the 28th and you will get up to three and you will get a ticket for each one. And then on the 30th, um, you can come in and you can exchange those tickets for new plants. So, you know, if you're just sick of that fern, then, you know, give it to somebody else. Um, we also uh, appreciate we had over 50 people donate excess produce from their gardens this year to our little free pantry. The little free pantry is very heavily used by uh, community members of all ages. It's 
doing exactly what we were hoping it would do um, to fight, help fight food insecurity and provide fresh um, food to community members without the stigma that sometimes surrounds that kind of assistance. Um, however, we do need some um, shelf-stable donations um, coming up, so if you are interested in um, getting some little snack items to put in our pantry, um, you can contact me and I will help you um, get those to us because we would certainly appreciate it. That's all I have. Uh, since we're late in the, in the uh, month, I don't have a lot going on at the library, so um, if you have any questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mandy. C, Fire Department, Chief Kanye. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Your Fire Department last month of August uh, answered uh, 65 calls. Uh, breaking them down, uh, we had 28 medical calls. Uh, some of your medical calls included shortness of breath, uh, a couple of COVID cases are rearing their head, some strokes, some diabetics, some allergic reactions, as well as chest pains, and we did have falls. We also have an ambulance that is located within our structure, and our uh, fire department ambulance answered uh, five calls with COVID patients, shortness of breath. We did have uh, somebody that was exposed to a chemical release, and we transported him. And again, we had falls. Falls seems to be a reoccurring process. So as we are in the fall season, pardon the pun, but can we go out and when you're visiting your friends or your family, could you straighten out that carpet? Could you possibly not see that electrical extension cord somewhere? Can we make your house a little bit safer? So take a moment when we do that, please and thank you. Uh, fire calls, we had 21 uh, calls for fire, including a closet fire, as well as a roof that was on fire, as well as a lightning strike. We also had a bathroom fire. For those of you that are burning candles, please turn them off when you're done. Blow them out, please and thank you on that. Um, we also had a couple of faulty furnaces. As Mandy just spoke to you all about cleaning a furnace, it's fall. We're two weeks away from fire prevention. We ask you always to check your smoke detectors. When's the last time you checked your furnace? It's a perfect time to change that filter. Make sure there's no debris fields around there. Make sure it's mechanically safe. We have a couple of great vendors that operate in this community. Please give them a call. Our trainings included a GPS navigational course for uh, wondering how we can do that. Um, we uh, opted on a national uh, grid combination with all the seven area fire departments. Uh, we wanted to do it in such a way that should a loved one be lost, how can we go ahead and uh, create some normalcy and not overlap on our searching patterns? We thought that was really good. Uh, 90 second drill, 90 second drill is how can that fire engine land at your house, your home, your business, start squirting water and continue to squirt water as well as deploying hand lines. It proved very effective. I also had the recent honor to be selected to uh, the National Fire Academy for a Chief Executive Fire Officer training. This uh, gave a uh, new light to looking at strategic growth, to looking at a strategic viewpoint, as well as within that viewpoint to how we can chaperone this organization into the future. And I thank you for that opportunity. Lastly, our special duties included four different events. We had the Touch a Truck event, which if you haven't gone, go. It's an opportunity to have over, uh, to look at cement truck, you know, dump trucks, to antique fire trucks, to, uh, you know, boom spraying agricultural equipment. Uh, we had a recent opportunity to do some corporate fire extinguisher training. Please feel free to contact your fire department at any time if you'd like to have fire extinguisher training. We welcome that. Speaking of welcoming, the opportunity of welcoming back students to the fall season, giving them a hand up, giving them a high five, welcome back students. And lastly, uh, are doing our work at the uh, Clay County Fair with the racetrack. And that's a little bit of what your fire department's been doing. Any questions? Just one comment, Chief. I want to thank you and your department for your 9-11 memorial display. Flags, truck, awesome. Thank you. Thank you on behalf of the men and women that did it. Thank you, Chief. 
D Police Department. I believe Brian, you have the report from Chief Warburton. Correct. Yeah, the chief was going to be unable and didn't want to at 30 minutes before the meeting um, subject the officer to having to give a report tonight. So. <laughs> No better well, time. But the good news is I <laughs> control the agenda. So. <laughs> Introduce yourself. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Um, the month of August, the Spencer Police Department responded to 960 calls for service and 38 arrests. The month, the department also focused on their attention on the school system. First, we partnered with Spencer Schools to do a press release about the school bus safety and the repercussion of illegally passing a school bus. Second, we focused on the middle school traffic flow the first two weeks of school. Officers did stationary patrol in the area and performed close to 30 traffic stops during that time with warnings being issued. The majority of the stops were for violating the right turn only sign at East 15th Street and 10th Avenue East. Um, the majority of these stops were in the first week of school with only a handful coming in the second week of enforcement. Unfortunately, we're still getting reports of people violating the sign with regards to after school activities. So in light of this, um, we're working on installing a flashing solar, solar, solar powered right turn only sign that will hopefully grab the attention of motorists. Sign was ordered and will be installed as soon as possible. Um, the month of August, we had department wide training in CPR, AED, bloodborne pathogens and taser recertification. That's all, not, he, uh, that's all he submitted. I'm not going to call you chief, Brian. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Public Works, Mark. Good evening. A few of the things that we'll mention uh, kind of cross over from August into September as well. So through that process, uh, both Solid Waste and the Street Division have a fair amount of preparations to do for the Clay County Fair. Uh, extra sewer cleaning, uh, putting up the no parking signs, placing containers, and et cetera. Uh, the solid waste does go to the uh, fair twice a day, every day during the fair, uh, during the week, and on the weekends at 4.30. And then depending on the, the, the crowd, it's either at 12.30 or at 1 p.m. They kind of judge that a little bit if they feel it's a little better. And, uh, you know, kudos to the operators and drivers. That's pretty stressful with all the people walking and trying to maneuver and dump containers, and it takes a lot of patience on everybody's side, and it, it went very well. Um, one of the busiest places uh, for us that will soon be uh, in full swing will be the tree site. Uh, that tree site maintenance has been going well. Uh, the public does a nice job of helping to self-police that. We have had a few pesky... Uh, Violators sneaking some uh, paneling and some lumber out there, so try to keep your eyes open for that. And uh, I think it's pretty common that the uh, that we do self-police some. People will mention, hey, I saw somebody, I, I told them not to. And that helps keep that a, a free 24-hour uh, facility. We've already received quotes and uh, for the icing, sand, and chloride for the winter months. Also secured the uh, rental trucks. Uh, hold harmless agreements, proof of liability insurance, and reviewed the rates on that. We also had the seal coat pro project. That takes some prep on our side uh, for placing all you know, around the manholes and weeds and no parking signs. And then, of course, the process goes pretty quick. And then we try to sweep them at least three times if we can uh, before the winter season to get the red rock off the road, the granite. Um, we have some sewer work that we're... Uh, uh, planning for this fall. We've been working on that and ordering some product in. We're going to do some extensive uh, root treating. It's a foaming product that goes into the lines. Uh, we've done some of that in the past. We're going to ratchet that up. We'll be able to uh, do a, 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 re a good review and then televise it before and after to get a full, full uh, view of how that's working. Also, um, I've been personally working on the capital improvement plan with the divisions and the supervisors kind of preliminary before we get that into full swing, but kind of starting some rough drafts with that. I was at the wastewater treatment plant, and the Clarifier Foundation is ready to be poured for the uh, project going on there. Um, also, the street division is working on, uh, on the RCC restroom and some other construction projects, various construction projects, and Brian took a little little wind out of my sails. I was going to mention the right turn flashing light was ordered, but between Warby and Brian, they've got that covered. So anything else? Thank Mark, you. you want to touch on West 4th, the uh, seal coat? 
Sure, they're going to move in. They were supposed to move in this week and start some of the concrete operations of that project. It'll be a probably a you know three week total, I would imagine. But the mill and overlay will go quite quickly. The things that take a little extra time is bringing the uh, sidewalk approaches up to ADA standards and then some repairs. You'll okay. see some paint paint out there, so we're getting close. Mark, question I have: um, I think we all, all of us benefited from the trip that we took and look at the aquatic center. Um, would it be worthwhile for the council to go look and see what's going on down at the sewage treatment plant? Oh, sure. It's uh, in full. When, whenever we can, whenever you can yeah, schedule that, it, it's something we can all drive to. We don't need a bus and that sort of thing. No, yeah, and, and it, it, you know, it, uh, it'll depend what one, what phase you want to see it in. Right now, the lab is gutted and, uh, so there's, it's a little rustic in there right now. Uh, they've set up a temporary lab to do the testing uh, in the uh, CSO pumping station on uh, 4th Avenue East down at the end, the very south end. So um, it's not a good showing of what the plant, but, but you get to see how it operates, and you, you can see it pre- and post-project as well. So that, that's always good. That's one, one person's opinion. No, no, well, I've had other be, interest in well from a, uh, as well from other folks. And, for us yep. to get a refresher. Yeah, yep. That was easy. Anything else? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Parks and Rec, Jared. Good evening again. Um, just kind of giving an update on uh, some of the current CIP projects we're working on. So the boat ramp uh, project, we're going to be bid, uh, take those bids on September 30th um, at 3 p.m. And then we'll have the public hearing on the specs and um, hopefully award a bid at the, the next council meeting. Um, scoreboards, we've had, we had ordered um, three uh, new Dactronic scoreboards. Those are scheduled to be in in October, um, and we'll get those uh, put up here this fall yet. Um, the Fairview Tennis Courts also uh, going to put that out uh, for bid here uh, this winter sometime for uh, next spring. Uh, moving to the aquatic center, um, we got a company coming to look at the, the flooring and the slide structure itself um, to see what we need to do there, make some necessary repairs, um, check it for safety, things like that. Uh, they're supposed to be here uh, midweek, um, so I'll let everybody know uh, how that goes. Uh, pool heaters we're still working on uh, through insurance claims uh, for that and receiving additional quotes. Um, for replacement of that particular pool heater. Um, and so we'll have that discussion as well. Um, some of the maintenance items we're working on, uh, doing some fall weed spraying, uh, winterizing water lines will be coming up here soon. Um, working on building and equipment maintenance, uh, clearing out landscaping and, and, and some of our parks, as well as tree trimming and removal, George. So. <laughs> Uh, campground uh, will be closing October uh, 1st um, due to staffing issues. Uh, we don't currently have a camp host on site uh, every weekend or anything like that in evening. So um, we usually don't get a lot of traffic after the fair time. Uh, we get occasional few hunters, things like that, and we'll be able to probably accommodate those. But um, Food truck um, event will be this Friday, the 24th at Westview Park. And then finally, um, talked with J.R. Schumacher, Stolly's trail work. We're going to be replacing some more sections of that particular trail here this week or next. So, Thank you, Jared. Any questions for Jared? Hey, Jared, one question on the aquatic center. Yep. Did we ever determine what the, the – if there was a leak or the high – No, we can't. Uh, currently, we're at a standstill. Um, you know, we've had uh, – Midwest Mechanical out there. Um, we've cameraed, you know, areas that we thought we might have a leak. Um, we've inspected our surge tank, piping in there, um, scoped those. We can't seem to find any sort of uh, leak that where we would expect to see one. Um, so currently we're just kind of at a scratching our heads at the moment, uh, still trying to go out through some other options. But right now we're kind of at a standstill. Is that drain, is that metered in and out? In other words, can you meter flow? So if you had a, would you be able to detect if the drain was leaking? No. So 
it's just metered on water coming in. Um, right. So the, where it drains currently, um, it's separated a little bit. So when we backwash, we, we can pump chlorinated water into um, the sanitary sewer. Um, when we actually drain the pool, we have to wait for the chlorine to dissipate, and then we actually uh, dump that towards Moose Pond. So, I was just curious, if you put 50,000 gallons of water in, and you exit 50,000 gallons of water. No, we don't have that. Nope. There's no way of measuring that. Nope. Jared, is there any way they can measure that through the whole city's usage at that time? That it really, that it was really that much difference, a big jump in usage? Or wouldn't there be enough at 50,000 gallon to show up on the city usage? I guess I'm not uh, well, following what, what, what you're what's saying. It's gone through the uh, the towers and what's been u the utilization of the whole city. I would think that much of a surge in usage would show up on their total output of for the city. Yeah, that I'm not sure. We just so we we saw a spike in our particular uses at the pool for uh, a number of times. So it it started. We lost, you know, according to the meter, we lost. <laughs> you know, 500, 5 million gallons of water. Um, but then it quit for another period of months and we, we hadn't changed anything. So um, at first we, we thought we had a leak. We went and tried to search for that stuff. We aren't able to find any source of water loss that would cause that amount of water. Um, we have a very small line that comes into that, that meter and so even outputting that amount of water is almost not practical. So we're, we're trying to work with SMU um, and have those discussions on, you know, is it a faulty meter? Is it, you know, how can we correct the issue? Um, and that's currently where we're at, so. But five million gallons certainly would show up on the total city usage if it was, if it actually happened, I would think. Yeah, we, we, we would even think we'd, we'd see it in the pool and we never did, so. Um, Okay, That's what, what makes it a little bit frustrating and kind of confusing mm -hmm. as to, to what the issue is. So, still working through it. Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you, Lauren. Any other questions for Jared? Thank All you. All right. Golf course, Brian. I know he submitted a report via email. I don't. He is out for a few days on personal leave. Okay, personal leave. All right. City Attorney's Report, Don. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Nothing particularly exciting in the month of August. Um, work uh, supporting uh, the staff and the engineers on projects you've you've heard about, like the uh, the East Side uh, uh, Sanitary Sewer Replacement and Street Project, and Seventh Avenue Southwest, and the floodplain. Um, I work with Alec and his staff most days. Uh, he's he's got my email at the top of his list somewhere. Uh, <laughs> And I know he didn't mention uh, that he's spending a lot of time on nuisances, uh, but we both are. Uh, hopefully that season is about to end. Um, we, as, as Alec did mention, we're working on some changes that will filter their way to the council in regard to building permits and in regard to some provisions of the zoning ordinance that need to be updated. Um, but uh, I suppose I should mention, we. We occasionally do get claims of one nature or another that um, uh, some property owner or some citizen believes the city might owe them for something. Um, and those routinely get uh, referred to our insurance company uh, for handling. That's why we have that insurance and then that's the route we take. Any questions? All right, thank you, Don. Item eight, engineer's report, Jim. Now, Ross has been given some really good ones, so I, good, the bar is high. Good evening again. Well, I, I won't bore you. Uh, you've talked about most of our projects. I, I would just reiterate on the 4th Street project. They're going to be in doing uh, sidewalk ramps right away, supposedly tomorrow. Uh, subcontractor, now here's a subcontractor that we haven't worked with, uh, let through the DOT. Uh, but there's a lot of sidewalk ramps to do, so you'll see that starting. And then... Uh, like Mark said, next week, the week of the 27th, they'll start the mill and the overlay. At least that's the schedule. And so uh, for the next probably three weeks, 4th Street's going to be, you know, 
tore up, you're going to be driving on a rough surface. So if you can at, at all possible, avoid 4th Street. Um, we're starting on the west side uh, where the pavement ends almost to 11th Avenue and going all the way through to the east side to 5th Avenue. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll stage through there, but uh, more than likely they'll want to do all the milling at once, so there'll be a lot of rough surface to drive on. It's okay to drive on, it's just rough and dirty. And then uh, once we get in the overlay process, though, then we'll have to block traffic. And there will be a period of time when they'll, sp they'll uh, spray the surfaces with tack oil, and I would avoid driving on that at, at any chance you can. We'll have the street closed, but we always seem to find a few people that manage to drive in there on the tack oil and get it all over their car, and that's a problem for everybody. So uh, try to avoid 4th Street. And the only other things that you, you talked about everything else, we do have a couple projects going at the airport. Um, you know, we report to the airport board, but I thought I'd report here. We're still in the process of rehabilitating the pavement out there, which is mainly patching and joint sealing. Um, the rain is killing them. Uh, it, every time it rains, it rains one day, but then it, the joints and everything we do is moisture sensitive out there. So it's, you know, it's, we're down another day. So one rain day costs them two working days. And that's, uh, we've gotten a lot of rains, uh, a lot of little rains, and, and it's been a nuisance. So the airport main runway has been closed now for almost a month. And we had originally hoped to do that in 21 days. So um, that one's going kind of slow. And then the other project that we're working on uh, is uh, maintenance improvements at the terminal building, a new roof. Uh, we've got some work to do on some of the windows. Uh, they're going to put a new interior ceiling in it. Um, we've got some tuck pointing of some of the brick. Uh, just mostly exterior maintenance and then a new ceiling inside. So that project will get let in uh, October. Um, we talked about the boat ramps out. Um, so that's... Uh, basically what we've got going on right now. Any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. Item nine, city manager's report, Brian. Um, don't have too much. I guess I'd like to extend a thank you to the city crews um, and departments that had um, worked during the fair, sanitation, street, police, and fire. Um, you guys, I was out there several days and um, you represented the city well. Um, also like to extend a thank you to the fair board and Jeremy, I believe the fair went off pretty well as but as well as we could expect it in the times we were given. And um, I think crowds seem to reflect that. Um, some days were fairly busy. Um, and so I think overall, I think um, the community put on a great fair and thank them for their efforts this year. Um, I know it's challenging. Um, and in spite of everything, I think it went off without a hitch. So um, otherwise, not much else that I have to report on tonight. So. Any questions for Brian? Bill? I'll, I'll comment that uh, Brian did volunteer 10 or 11 hours driving a golf cart with the rest of us, courtesy cart out there. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Very good. All right. Uh, item 10, uh, we got mayor's report. Just a couple items. Uh, Jessica's in attendance. I'll put her on the spot here. You want to take the microphone, Jessica? She, she, she doesn't know how to do this. <laughs> She's in the room. <laughs> so as, as the Beatles sang, the long and winding road, you know, before we convene again as a council for legislative items, uh, we should hopefully have a new city manager. At least we, I should say we will have completed the interview process. So October 4th is our next council meeting. October 2nd is uh, our city manager interviews. And so I saw Jessica out there and I thought maybe it might be good just to refresh everybody what the schedule looks like and what the expectations are as it relates to the interview process in the next chapter. Yes, so our interview process this year will just be, uh, or this time I should say, hopefully it's not an annual thing, <laughs> um, just a one day process. So thank you to all of the community members that will join the panel. Um, they put up with me switching the dates on them, so I appreciate that. Um, and we have good attendance for everybody that needs, there's 23, uh, including the council and the community members and the candidates. So we have three candidates coming in. Um, they'll stay the night, Friday night, um, and see the community Saturday, spend time with the department heads, as well as um, different groups of the community panels and the city council um, do some informal and then formal 
um, interviews and we'll do a meet and greet probably in the morning. We're thinking about having coffee with the city manager um, type of meet and greet. So that's what it should look like. I'll send out some formal um, schedules over this next week and the packets will be delivered as well um, to each of those that we'll be interviewing. Any questions for me? Is there a status on, are all three able to attend? As far as I know, yes. Okay. In this changing world of COVID, I can't ever say 100%, 100% but <laughs> as far as I know, yes, all three should attend. And they're looking forward to it. And they don't want us to move it again. <laughs> really? Or do we? Any right. other questions? All right, thank you, Jessica. Never coming again. <laughs> <laughs> I spent time with candidates uh, since our last council meeting. I, I offered the, the public uh, when the candidacies first came on board, if anybody had any questions, they could certainly reach out to me or contact me, and most of them have, and we've had good discussions. It's good to see uh, an active stable of candidates that I think have the best uh, interest of the community at heart. Um, I know the interview process is coming up, so I would again extend the invitation if any of you have specific questions that you would like to relay onto the candidates outside of the public meet and greet, I'm happy to do that um, on your behalf. Uh, we also, as a reminder, the closed session as it relates to interviews with candidates, not only is that uh, really to get a, a, a good interview process as far as the frankness of the responses, but it's also to uh, protect the candidates themselves. Uh, as, the, as we know, we're interviewing three. Uh, one will be offered the job and two have to go back to their current place of employment. And so um, it, those laws in Iowa are designed to not only protect the integrity of the process, but I think also you know, protect the ability for those candidates to go back and, and, and re-enter into their work environment just as they left it. And so um, while it is a closed session, if you have questions, please let me know and I will make sure that they get relayed and the answers get back to you. Took time at the fair. I would echo Brian's comments. Thank everybody involved in it all the way from, you know, from the paid people out there to the volunteers. The fair couldn't be the fair without the people. And the farthest person I gave a, a golf cart ride to, I didn't take them to their home, but uh, I <laughs> took them to their car, but they were from Alaska, and oh. they came just for the fair. Uh, they originally from the area, hadn't been to the fair in 15 years or so, and met up with some friends and flew in from, I believe, the Anchorage area, if I recall correctly. So uh, it truly uh, does have a large pull. You beat me. I had Whidbey Island at Washington. <laughs> Did you? Out of Washington <laughs> on the West Coast? Uh, I spent some time with Brian and Jessica going over some uh, just internal things. Spent some time with Don to get some counsel on a couple different uh, topics. Uh, I would conclude by when we all go home and we turn on the TV nationally and look at the news, uh, we see a lot of divisiveness in the country. And we see a lot of very polarized words and uh, tribal camps developed. And it's great to live in a community where we can take and have a, a public hearing like we did tonight as it relates to a major economic development project, um, the sensitivity of uh, public access to streets, the sensitivity to property, which outside of family, property is probably the next dearest thing that, that we have as, as humans in the United States anyway. And so um, no matter on what side of the issues people have concerns, it was uh, very reassuring tonight um, I believe the community shown through in the spirit that it has as far as expressing individual concerns business concerns and you know everybody working forward to a positive solution and so I just like to say um, I appreciate everyone participating in the process and it's a, a good just reaffirmation of who we are as a community so with that I would entertain any questions all right item 11 council committee reports Brian um, just two items there. One is, as the mayor said, our next regular city council meeting will be October 4th. Um, and as previously discussed earlier, we like to schedule a committee of the whole meeting. A um, couple topics potentially, but at least one is to discuss the recommendation of the Compensation Advisory Board, um, looking for potential dates. Um, as I look at the calendar quickly, um, don't know if maybe next Monday evening would work. For, for you guys, the 27th. Um, what time are you thinking, Brian? 
five thirty six. I mean, we're we can be flexible to the time. September twenty seventh. Bill, any times? Bill's good for any time. It's five thirty work. Five thirty good. Tracy Donovan. Uh, send out a reminder. Uh, yeah, we will. We'll get a, an agenda out later this week. But does that work for you, Lauren? Yeah. Five thirty. And your flip flops. Okay, we'll schedule that. Um, we'll get an agenda out later in the week right. with those, and that will be. That's everything. I don't think Iowa State's playing any other exotic away games, <laughs> so Tom should be here. I think. <laughs> Wish all the Cyclone fans safe travel back from Las Vegas. Looked like y'all had fun down there. Item 12, I would entertain a motion to approve the bills and claims. So moved. First, first by Bill, second by Donovan. Hard time keeping up with that. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item 13, would anybody like the uh, floor? Opportunity to address the council, Mr. Bolt. Same process applies. Just state your name and address so we can get it in the notes. Brian Bulk, 1124 St. Luke Drive. I will keep it brief as I know it's uh, getting late. I appreciate the comments in reference to the Aquatic Center. I just want to point out, though, uh, I do believe that this is an issue that we need to stay on top of. Uh, June 7th. Uh, bills and claims were approved for water and sewer in the amount of $2,208.65. July 19th, water and sewer was approved in the amount of $3,041.77. August 16th, bills and claims approved water and sewer in the amount of $48,719.05. And tonight, you approved bills and claims in the amount of $25,656.53. June and July add up to be a total of $5,250.42. Looking back throughout the years, that seems to be a consistent monthly rate. Uh, August and September, $74,375.58. That's a difference of $69,125.16 that's been approved in the last two months. Clearly, we have an issue. I know it's being worked on. Brian and I have spoken about this a couple of times. Uh, I do make the request that once this is figured out, um, even if there was a leak, if it leaked into the ground, we shouldn't be experiencing the sewer rates that we are experiencing. And I ask that the city request SMU provide a refund um, once we're able to decipher probably an average of our sewer rates. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Anyone else like the microphone? Going once? Going twice. We'll adjourn to the parking lot. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. First by Tracy. Everybody wants to stay. Second by second by Bill as he throws his hands up in the air. I said it really quick. So. Did all those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Good night. See you next Monday. Can I second that as well?